You know that feeling when you try to do a good thing and then you accidentally scorch the entire planet? Yeah, the future can be terrifying. Lasers, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology. Soon, science will become so advanced that you'll be able to move objects with the power of your mind. But some of these advancements have the potential to end all life on Earth as we know it. Today, we'll be looking at five technologies that could save and destroy us all at the same time. Now, before we look into the future, let's go way back into the past. 66 million years ago, an asteroid busted its way through space and collided with Earth. It caused a mass extinction event and wiped the dinosaurs right off the face of Earth. A threat like that? Still real. Just earlier this year, scientists detected an asteroid that has a non-zero chance of hitting our planet in 2032 and wiping out all of us. This asteroid is called 2024 YR4, and it's not the only deadly space rock that could be on a collision course with us. Scientists are already taking these threats seriously, and in the future, we might have the most epic solution to this space problem. Imagine a massive satellite in low Earth orbit, equipped with a kind of laser that can turn incoming asteroids into dust. Sounds pretty epic. But there's one problem. The bigger the target is, the bigger the laser we'd need to destroy it. The asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs was only about 10 kilometers wide. Now, to destroy a rock like that, we'd need to build a laser array that's at least 10 kilometers in length. That's about 100 times larger than the International Space Station. And we'd have to fire it when the deadly asteroid is at least 3.3 million kilometers away from us. Why? Well, I might have exaggerated the whole turning into dust thing. In reality, scientists are looking to nudge the asteroids off course, rather than pulverize them on the spot. And that would take years to do. Vaporizing asteroids would be a lot more epic, but it would require 10 million times more energy than what was released by the most powerful nuke we've ever created. Sadly, it's just not realistic. But lasers can do some pretty amazing things. Like an ultra-precise laser could make it rain. It would fire short and intense pulses into humid air and trigger chemical reactions that create droplets. When enough droplets come together, then they'd rain down. Creating rain clouds on demand can be pretty useful in areas prone to extreme weather, like California or Chile. As Earth gets hotter and drier, deadly wildfires have become common. We could use lasers to disrupt wildfires by cutting fire breaks in forests and causing controlled burns from the air. And lasers can be our solution to unlimited renewable energy from space. That's right, we would launch special satellites equipped with reflectors and laser power transmitters. These satellites would capture solar power, convert this power into laser beams, and then transmit it back down to Earth, where we could use that energy in our power grid. Lasers are awesome, but we've seen enough sci-fi movies to know they can also destroy humanity as we know it. If Earth had a system of lasers around it, imagine what a country or a corporation on the path of war could do with them. Or the kind of havoc that even a simple targeting error could cause. Remember, we're talking about a laser powerful enough to move asteroids. Just one misfire from Earth's orbit could obliterate an entire city. Or if we're talking about an extremely powerful laser from the future, a misfire could be the end of an entire planet. I got a bad feeling about this. The second technology that comes with the truly incredible power to save the human race or to destroy it is artificial intelligence. When it comes to writing, ChatGPT can draft something in seconds. Sure, it won't be perfect yet, but it can really get your creativity going. Robots are putting cars together on assembly lines. In Walmart warehouses, robots are operating forklifts. Robots are even doing surgery. Not at the Walmart. 
Every day, new AI tools become available and more and more people sign up to use them. But it can be scary. Like, will humans be able to compete with AI for a job? Then there's the problem of deepfakes. AI can create false versions of reality so compelling that we can't distinguish what's true from what's false. What if some of those fake realities stirred humanity into war? And then there's the ultimate threat of an intelligent AI becoming fully autonomous and taking over humanity. You've probably already seen plenty of videos warning about the dark side of artificial intelligence. Killer robots, rogue algorithms, AI taking over the world. Well, let's flip the script and talk about how AI isn't just a potential threat. It could also be one of the most powerful tools we have to save humanity. One technology that could save more lives than any sci-fi breakthrough we've imagined today is AI-driven drug discovery. Most people don't realize this, but drug development, it's kind of broken. About 90% of drug development fails. It's slow, insanely expensive, and oftentimes based on guesswork. It can take between 12 and 15 years just to find out that a drug candidate isn't going to work. Artificial intelligence can help us identify those failures much faster. But the problem is that biology is way too complex for traditional AI models to handle. That's why one company called Immunoprecise Antibodies, or IPA, is working on something better. They're not just another biotech startup. They're fusing cutting-edge AI with real-world lab work to actually fix drug discovery. Their cutting-edge HIFT technology maps biology like Google indexes the web, accelerating the process of designing better, safer drugs. With a database of 26 billion biological relationships, their Lens AI platform can predict toxicity, optimize treatments, and fast-track discoveries that once took decades. And they're already seeing results. IPA recently developed next-gen GLP-1 therapies targeting diabetes and metabolic disorders using Lens AI. These AI-designed drugs could move beyond daily injections to non-invasive delivery methods like transdermal patches. Safer, smarter, and easier for patients? That's a massive leap forward. The global diabetes market alone is worth hundreds of billions, and most companies are still using outdated trial and error drug discovery methods. IPA is out here building the future, and Big Pharma is watching. They've got proprietary IP, real partnerships with major pharmaceutical companies, and a serious head start in a $100 billion plus industry. If you're an investor or just care about the future of medicine, click on the link in the description to learn more about immunoprecise antibodies. This third technology is straight out of a sci-fi movie, but it's very real. I'm talking about nanotechnology, millions of microscopic nanobots transforming our world for better or for worse. Nanoparticles are incredibly small. They're so tiny that one million of them can fit into one cell. And of course, cells are microscopic. Thousands of cells would fit into a single grain of rice. Those nanobots, well, it's safe to say they're super microscopic. And they're also super effective when it comes to treating cancer. Nanoparticles kill cancer cells with great precision. They can be programmed to strike a direct path to the heart of a tumor. Once they reach the target spot, they'll release the cancer-destroying chemicals or gene treatments at a controlled rate. The best of all, these treatments will kill the cancer cells without harming the rest of the body. And nanotechnology isn't just for beating cancer. Nanoparticles called nanosomes can be used to repair skin and reverse the aging process. They can penetrate the skin where larger particles fail to get through. Once they get in, they stimulate the production of collagen, which improves the skin's texture and elasticity. In a few decades, nanobots will swim all around our bodies, making small repairs to our cells and basically making us immortal. Some scientists think that the first humans to live to be 1,000 years old 
are already walking among us. The nanobots in our bloodstream will repair organs that become damaged, kind of like having a continuous internal tune-up. These nanobots would help us heal wounds and destroy cancer cells. They could even help us see the end of Alzheimer's, obesity, and diabetes. But even this amazing technology that could save us from disease and aging has a dark side that could destroy us. If nanobots began to replicate uncontrollably, we'd quickly become doomed. This is called the Grey Goo Theory, and it describes how nanotechnology might end the world. The nanobots are microscopic, but once they start making copies of themselves, their growth becomes exponential. Self-replicating nanoparticles would start to use up all the organic and inorganic materials on Earth. They'd become nanotech cancer, unstoppable, untreatable, and consuming everything in their path. Eventually, nanobots would create so many copies of themselves, they'd turn our beautiful blue marble into gray goo rock. Of course, we're still kind of far from this technology, but in the future, we better be careful. Nanobots are tiny, but their impact could quickly become planet-wide. Scientists would have to limit or completely ban nanobot self-replication well before it becomes a problem. We should add kill switches to these nanobots too. You know, just in case. Another frightening possibility is that governments or private companies could use nanotechnology in warfare. Uh, the same nanoparticles designed to target cancer cells could be reprogrammed to destroy healthy tissue instead. Remember that nanobots are tiny. You can't even see them. They'd slip into your body without a trace. By the time you realized something was wrong, it would already be too late. They'd be attacking your cells. In the wrong hands, nanotech could become the most silent and deadly weapon ever created. I know, it's scary. I've always rooted for nanotech, but now I'm just kind of happy that this technology is too young to be that advanced. So let's look at another technology that can save us or wipe us out. This time, let's look at the technology that can control the climate. Now, our world is heating up and fast. In the last century and a half, all of our factories, farming, and pollution have pushed the global temperature up by one and a half degrees Celsius. And it's only going to get hotter. More violent storms, hotter, faster spreading wildfires, floods in some places, crushing droughts in others. All of this is already happening. So, can we do something about the climate to save humanity from all these catastrophes? Well, yeah, we can. And the answer to our climate problems could lie in geoengineering. The idea is pretty grand. We have to manipulate the environment on a large scale to make whatever changes we'd need to keep Earth nice and comfortable. For example, we could try to cool Earth down by reflecting some of the sun's energy back into space. If our planet reflected more sunlight, it would mean fewer greenhouse gases and less global warming. And to do that, we'd have to inject millions of tons of aerosols into the atmosphere over the next hundred years. Yeah, it sounds like a long-term commitment, but remember, humans might just live to be 1,000 years old soon. A hundred years doesn't seem so bad. We could also do something called marine cloud brightening. That's when we spray microscopic seawater drops into the air in an attempt to make the clouds more reflective. Reflective clouds mean that less of the sun's energy would reach the Earth's surface, and less of the sun's energy means fewer greenhouse gases. We could capture carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and store it underground. Carbon capture technology like that's already being developed right now. The only downside to it is it would require a lot of energy, and that kind of defeats the purpose of saving Earth from climate change. Unfortunately, these Earth-saving theories are just theories. Our planet and its biosphere are very complex. By saving one thing, we might just be hurting something else. Here's the terrifying downside of geoengineering. Many of the proposed solutions could go wrong, causing terrible devastation or the end of life as we know it. The aerosol injection comes with massive planet-changing risks. Messing with sunlight 
won't just lower the temperature, it could also change how winds blow and how rain falls. It could lead to longer droughts, stronger cyclones, and unpredictable weather around the world. If we ever had to stop the injections suddenly, Earth would heat up faster and harder than ever before, unleashing even more extreme climate chaos. Even a tiny miscalculation could have terrible consequences for life on Earth. Extreme climate events could worsen and kill millions of people. Even more frightening, we could cause overcooling and set off another ice age. Then, instead of overheating, we could freeze to death. Geoengineering may hold great promise, but it seems like right now it's more likely to kill us. But how about a technology that enhances your own brain? Let me introduce you to a brain-computer interface. It's like telekinesis, but the real thing. In short, it lets you control devices with just your thoughts. Your brain sends out signals when you think or intend to do something, and a computer will pick up those signals, figure out what you want, and make it happen. No hands, no voice, just pure mind power. Brain-computer interfaces might revolutionize what we can achieve, and maybe with humans in the driver's seat, nothing could go wrong. Well, let's see if that's the case. Brain-computer interfaces can power the most amazing changes in our human bodies. New innovations might help blind people see, even those born blind, as long as their visual cortex isn't damaged. That's the part of the brain that processes sight. Instead of fixing the optic nerve, this tech uses an implant to directly activate neurons in the brain's visual center, creating images that a person can actually perceive. It's like plugging television straight into the brain. This tech can also make people with disabilities more mobile. You could transmit signals from the brain through the computer interface to control a prosthetic or a wheelchair. If you have a speech disability, a brain-computer interface could help you communicate. It would pick signals from your brain and then translate them into text or synthesized speech. For people with ALS or paralysis, the ability to speak again will be life-changing. Merging your human brain with a computer interface could bring the full depth of AI capabilities like you've never imagined. It could give you unlimited memory, instantaneous recall, and superhuman computing abilities. With this computer built directly into your brain, you'd be unstoppable. If multiple humans were equipped with this technology, we could link our minds together by connecting the computer interfaces. Ever wanted to communicate telepathically with a friend? Well, sync up your brain interfaces and start transmitting your deepest, darkest thoughts. And if nanobots haven't given us bodies that last forever by now, well, we could upload our complex brains to a computer bank and achieve digital immortality. But as always, there's a dark side to the brains integrated with computers. You know, today, hackers can target your laptop or your phone. Tomorrow, they could hack into your brain. By controlling your thoughts and hacking into your motor control center, they could even make you do things against your will. Even using today's brain-computer interface, scientists have shown that they can get a person to move their hand by transmitting a neural signal. Imagine, being remote controlled like a toy. That's my worst nightmare. It could also be the end of privacy as we know it. Governments could get a readout from the computer interface and know exactly what you were thinking, who you were thinking about, and when. It could be the end of crime, but it could also end your freedoms. You know, thinking about all these possibilities, I'm not sure if I'm excited about what life could be or scared about how grim things are going to get. Okay, I'm going to choose to stay optimistic. Now that we know about the potential downsides, it just means we can better prepare for them, right? Well, what I'd like to do is jump 1,000 years into the future and see how this all pans out. But that's a story for another What If.